a drowning. This life was spared because someone was willing to share the breath of life. A non-breathing victim needs oxygen, and he needs it immediately. Mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing is the only known method of emergency resuscitation which supplies oxygen without a loss of time. You use less than a quarter of the oxygen you breathe in. Air contains 21% oxygen. Your exhaled air still has 16%. This slightly lower oxygen content is not as important as the speed with which you get it to the lungs. And once learned, mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing is as easy as blowing up a balloon. These students are being taught the basic steps of mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. The chart shows that during normal breathing, the air passages are open. If someone becomes unconscious, the tongue, which is attached to the jaw, often falls back against the throat and blocks the air passage. When the neck is lifted and the head is tilted back, the tongue is drawn forward to open the air passage. Various methods can be used to open the air passage. You can insert the thumb in the mouth and lift the jaw. Or you can push the jaw upward. But the simplest way is the head tilt method of lifting the neck and tilting the head back. Opening the air passage is always the first step in resuscitation. And sometimes this alone will enable the victim to breathe by himself. Mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing can be demonstrated on a training mannequin. First, lift the neck and tilt the head back. Seal the nose to prevent air from escaping. Open your mouth widely and make a tight seal around the mouth. Blow forcefully until the chest rises. Remove your mouth to let the victim exhale. Repeat every three to five seconds. More important than an exact rate is a full inflation with each breath. It is also possible to seal the nose with your cheek when you do mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing. If the head is tilted back but the chest does not rise when you blow into the mouth, quickly clear the throat with the index finger. When you see the chest rise and hear the victim exhale, you know that the lungs are being inflated. Mouth-to-nose breathing is an alternate method to mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. In this case, the hand is placed under the jaw to keep the lips closed and to maintain the head in the tilted position. A pillow under the head flexes the neck and may cause obstruction of the air passage. Always remove it before attempting resuscitation. Children can easily learn how to give artificial respiration by the mouth-to-mouth -mouth method. Here a young boy practices on a classmate. He lifts the neck, tilts the head back, then pinches the nose. He takes deep breaths and blows until the chest rises. Although he's practicing on someone his own size, he could readily inflate the lungs of an adult if necessary. Here each student has a chance to practice the correct procedure under supervision. An antiseptic solution can be used to cleanse the mannequin between students.
In young children, the leading cause of accidental death is suffocation. A baby mannequin can be used to teach the resuscitation of infants. The procedure is the same as for adults, except that the rescuer covers the baby's mouth and nose when he blows in. Also, the rate is slightly faster, about every two or three seconds. Infants commonly choke on food or foreign objects. If the chest does not rise, quickly invert the child over your arm. Deliver firm blows between the shoulder blades until the object is dislodged. Then, quickly resume resuscitation. If air distends the stomach, expel it by pressing on the upper abdomen. The head is turned to the side to prevent possible aspiration of stomach contents. No special equipment is needed to do mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing. If you wish, you can use a handkerchief or cloth over the mouth to avoid direct contact. Medical personnel and professional rescuers entrusted with the care of the public can use airway breathing aids. However, time never should be lost seeking any breathing device. Always remember these basic steps. Lift the neck and tilt the head back. Pinch the nose. Make a tight seal around the mouth. Blow until the chest rises. Now here are some real life scenes where mouth to mouth breathing can be used to save a life. object is stuck in the throat and the chest does not rise, turn the victim on the side and deliver firm blows between the shoulder blades. Sweep your finger quickly through the mouth to remove any foreign matter dislodged. Continue mouth to mouth breathing. Even though the fingers are used to pinch the nose, the head is always held back with the wrist. deep breaths. You are breathing for two people. A return of natural color and breathing are signs of a successful rescue. Begin mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing as soon as possible. 
Water cannot be drained from the lungs, so do not waste time on such maneuvers. The steps are simple and sure. Neck lifted, head back, nose sealed. Now inflate the lungs. A drowning victim often swallows large amounts of water. After mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing is well established, you can quickly turn the victim on the side and apply pressure on the upper abdomen. After a victim has been revived, there is always a risk of her becoming sick to the stomach. If left on her back, she could choke. After any resuscitation, it is best to turn the victim on her side and to maintain this position until medical help is available. save a life. The brain cannot survive for more than three to five minutes without oxygen. Mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing is first aid. Always send for help as soon as possible. Keep the head well back to maintain an open air passage. Everyone can learn how to give someone a second chance to live. The use of this life-saving knowledge can bring back the breath of life.